Hi everyone, we're just going to let everybody come into the room, as it were. This is Esther's weekly COVID webinar lockdown extravaganza number 3462. This week we have Phil Ed live from the International Space Station. And uh, Steve from, where are you Steve? I'm in Wells next to the sea on the North Norfolk coast. Wells next, next sea, next to the sea. The sea, you have next to get right. Sea hyphens it's very important I very important think. very, very important. nice and hazel who's joining us all the way from portugal and it you know if you're going to be in portugal it's rude not to drink the national drink which she has there white port amazing <laughs> Thanks so much for joining us, Hazel, this week, and of course to Phil and Steve. Um, it's great to be back doing our weekly webinar. It's always nice to see you. We're particularly excited because next week's uh, webinar will be replaced by our CPD sessions, our online CPD sessions. There's still a few places left, but we've got a fantastically healthy bunch of people. Well, I mean, a healthy number of people. I don't know if they're healthy. Doesn't matter if they're not, because they're online and they're coming for our online sessions and we're gonna have some great time um, working with Laura Ritchie, who's gonna do some stuff with the lower strings, Simon Cartledge with the upper strings. And we have Lucy Hare, who's going to be um, guiding us through some resilience sessions. Um, if you're not sure what resilience is all about, have a look at the, which website is it, Phil? Esther Education website? No, estherstrings.org.uk, Nicole. I can't keep up. I don't know. I don't know which one. Esther Strings website. Yes, it'll be on that one. Um, so you can read all about the sessions. And at the end of the week, we've got um, Chris Haig doing a folk session. And we've also got Simon Fisher coming to answer all your questions. Send us your questions. Fire them at him. He has to answer them, as long as they're not rude. Um, and then, of course, the most important night of the entire sessions is, of course, the night before the session start, which is Steve and uh, my tech party, our tech setup party, which once we've had a few drinks, it's a little hard to pronounce. But we're really looking forward to seeing everybody then. It's a really important date. If you're coming on the course, please do come to that tech setup party bring a drink um because we're going to be testing um everybody's connection making sure everyone can access the sessions uh, and of course we can say hi it's a nice social so please come along to that so now enough of me um I'll pop over to hazel now in portugal um and hazel tell us you're a few weeks ahead of us with lockdown you locked down how many weeks before we did um i think it was probably two three weeks yes it, it had started in in the uk before um but we locked down sooner, basically. Um, yeah, so it must have been the second week of March, I think, about the 10th, the schools closed, 6th or 10th of March. And how has it been for, for you as a teacher and, and your, all your Portuguese teachers or teachers in Portugal out there? Well, I think very much like all of you, a massive learning curve, scrambling at the beginning. We had, until Easter, we were kind of left to our own devices and told just work something out with the students. So we were contacting all the students individually and I was giving lessons on Skype, on Zoom, on WhatsApp, whatever the kids happened to have at hand. Um, and then during Easter, the schools organized themselves and they got um, a sort of central system set up. So since Easter, it's been much more organized, but just as exhausting. Yes, it is tiring, isn't it? I feel, I mean, this is now for us week 11, did we work out? I've lost count. That's how long it's been. Um, and it's, yeah. tiring. it's tiring just, you know, being at that screen the whole time. I suppose you, you underestimate the value of getting up for a cup of tea and just looking out the window even. I'm worried that my long distance vision is going to go. Are you right. worried about that, Hazel? Well, I, I didn't have much long distance vision to start off with, but... You were saying a couple of things last week, actually, about using the screen, or was it during during our webinars? I can't actually remember these days. It's all a blur of, of online webinars and things. Um, about you use the screen, you 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 teach in a completely different way. So I'm I'm always going, your little finger, your little finger, <laughs> sort of whichever you're using this this camera thing to do all sorts of stuff that you you wouldn't do before, um, and you're leaning forwards all the time. So in between lessons, I always leave myself four short hours to do this you know because yeah. you just you're, you're crippled otherwise my my youngest daughter's actually been counting off the days since she went into quarantine she went in a few days before me because there was a, a a case at her school and i think she's on 83 days now uh -huh. yeah 
She's been marking them off on her chalkboard, you know. Like being in prison? Uh, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. And what about, the, what about the government in Portugal? What support has there been? Has there been any for teachers or is it sort of you're on your own? Uh, it, there's there's a big discussion about, you know, the, the children that are being left behind and, and, and it, it's slightly annoying that there hasn't been much of a discussion about the, teacher, the teachers that have been left behind. Uh, I know of a couple of teachers who haven't been able to get their head around tech and 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 are struggling with that. But in general, there's been quite a lot of support from the schools in in different ways, different schools, different ways. Um, and and I think the government in general have really done a pretty good job. From Easter, this is general schooling, not so much for music, but from Easter, um, one of the TV channels was taken over. So they have um, up to the equivalent of the British 10th year, they have a certain number of lessons on the TV every day, which means kids who haven't got access to computers and Wi-Fi um, are still getting the material they need. Um, they cancelled all exams immediately. So we knew that the pressure was off as far as actually getting the material into their heads was concerned, you know. Um, and they're working very, very hard um, coordinating with all the different departments to make sure that if there's a problem next up academic year, there's more of an even playing field. They're talking about evening out Wi-Fi for the whole country and access to hardware for the kids or the or the or the, the families who don't have um, access to it and and stuff like that. So I know there's a massive movement going on, so that they're trying to even out the playing field as much as they can. But it's never the same, is it? Hey, Hazel, what, what about um, the teachers who aren't, who aren't linked with schools and then they've just got a private practice? Um, how, how have they managed, you know, have they had any help, financial help from the government as some of the self-employed have over here? Um, that happens very little here. It's very, very different. Um, almost all teachers are connected to a school, be it a private, small private school or a fully government funded school or a partially government funded school there's all sorts of different schools very few um uh, teach privately but i i do know of a, of a, a couple of, of of teachers and the the feeling here has been that if you have a service for your child and you're still earning the least you can do is still pay for that service so I think uh, at least my colleagues have had a sort of eight, 70, 80 percent rate um, and they've been teaching online and the parents have been fantastic. And so, because they're a private school, they are now starting to go to the students' houses, the ones the parents don't mind because mm -hmm. our lockdown's loosening up. I can't do that. I'm not authorised. I have to teach online until the end of the academic year. But they have that freedom um, because they're a private institution <coughs> or they're private, you know, they're uh, self-employed um but in general people are still pay paying for their gym inscriptions we paid our cleaners I, I paid my cleaner even though she couldn't come music lessons still being paid for even though they're online nobody was asking for discounts because it was put where the teachers still have to eat um so i think in general there's been a really good spirit about all of that you know that's lovely yeah. to hear because I, I hear, I don't hear a lot of that over here, actually. There are some people who've been wonderful, but yeah. I've heard so many people who've said that the parents just gone, oh, well, we'll just drop violin for a term, whatever. And yeah. Devastating, of course, if everybody does that. So that's lovely to hear that that's kind of a, a national attitude. Or It seems to be. I mean, obviously, there are people who've lost their jobs as well, lots of those. And, and all you can say is, well, yes, we understand. Obviously, you can't afford to pay for the instrument lessons, but... Uh, I'm I'm lucky enough to be receiving my full salary and um, obviously I will pay everybody I was paying before whether we're having the service or not because they also need to eat and it's just respect and that seems to be the general um, attitude um, yeah and also your um uh, your conference Hazel oh, your, your personal conference but uh, this is my personal conference but the, <laughs> uh, the Esther Portugal conference which was yeah. going to be in April and had to be postponed to September, looking good? Uh, uh, decision will be taken at the end of June as to whether it's online or, or presential. Um, but it's looking pretty dicey, mainly because 
we're we're conscious that it's got to be an even playing field and if we're opening up and we're okay uh maybe another three or four countries are but maybe there's there's five that aren't and we can't choose to exclude them by having a a, a conference um that's not online so as i say decision not made yet um but if, but if it's not in person then it will be online definitely yeah so it's, de it's definitely going ahead it's just it's just how yeah. Well, we've, we're already doing it. We're doing pre-conference um, activity when we have been since the date, the original date of the conference in April. Um, so we've asked the presenters to to send us uh, three minute teasers of, of their presentation. And we launch them on our YouTube channel twice a week. And then on the following Saturday, those two um, presenters are in a meet the speaker um, session or, or live session on youtube and people can come and ask questions anybody can come into the meeting it's not a, a closed one anybody that has the code and everybody who was signed up for the conference has the code every week so we have a jolly group every week <laughs> did you have any did you have any resist sorry do you have any resistance from any of the speakers to, to doing that or were they all happy to, to to take part i don't know the percentage we obviously it, it was never anything um other than voluntary um and obviously not all of them felt comfortable doing that but it the, the response has been really great yeah I, i've got to say i've been i've been present at a couple of these saturday night gatherings and it's great you, you with, with zoom you can have sort of uh, a dozen 16 people on your screen and you can flick between uh yeah. well, each set of 16 and and it's a it's a really nice buzz because uh, it's in English, <laughs> which is quite yeah. useful for me, and and um, and people from all around Europe and beyond. So it's it's a, it's a great little uh, great little chat room. Simulating coffee break a little bit, you know, simulating that time when you get together and and chat over coffee. Yeah, yeah. it's a valuable time. That that that's most often the most valuable time. Things like summer school, some in that's when I met you, Hazel. Exactly. Uh, but you know those sort of casual conversations that you can have with people, you can learn things and pick things up and uh it, i love it i love that kind of thing yeah yeah, yeah. um anyway so steve sitting there ever so well behaved in the corner there well we're all in a corner but you know I uh, steve, well i have to be well behaved occasionally yes well we won't let you in otherwise will we steve no um but you have had one hell of a week you you do look you 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 re i'm really <laughs> impressed <laughs> tell tell everyone what you've done you, it just, it, it's just an extension of the fact that that i have the sort of tech skills to do certain things so um one of the one of the things that happened this week was i was asked to organize a set of musicians to record remotely some film music for a couple of film music composers that i work with sometimes in cambridge and that was a really interesting and quite um demanding thing to try and organize um because you know i'm i'm fairly okay with 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 the technology that's needed i've got decent equipment and so on but for a couple of musicians that had not done this I think it's a steeper learning curve than I had imagined um, for them to record at home, and it's rather like the the, the guys, the, the members of Esther and the and the students that have done those collaborative videos that we did over the last few weeks. Um, that you forget that actually turning on a device, working out um, what to use to record yourself, um, trying to do it in perhaps even in a quiet environment, if you're in a house where there is. A reasonable amount of disturbance with noise and so on um it's a, it's quite a quite a challenge and then if the composers come to you and say well we need 48 bit uh, or sorry 24 bit 48k wav files and um, some of the musicians are saying what, what's that <laughs> <laughs> how do we set that in the software um so but you know it's one of those challenges is very interesting and there will at some point um there will be a film out an independent film out there which will have part of its soundtrack having been recorded remotely in lockdown, which is sort of fun, really. Amazing, isn't it? And and the, you would think now then you could have a lie down in a darkened room, but no, because next week you are doing what for the National School Symphony Orchestra? We've got some co collaborative videos. I mean, I think they're a really good um, example of what some of these organisations have managed to do in lockdown. Now, they should have had um, a, a, a physical course in July and that they realised wasn't going to happen. 
and so the, the John Madden who runs it and their team who are backing him, very good team that they've got based around Malvern College, have been doing a lot of work putting in place activities for the students to do. Um, so they started off with a big collaborative video of the opening of Alto Sprech Zarathustra, a little um, schools arrangement as it were, but came out really well with about 130 participants. Um, so they've put together lots of online folders of music, of activities, fun things to do, and they're also then recording each of the groups that would have been in, on the on the physical course, the junior orchestra, the middle orchestra, the senior orchestra, the choir, and so on, are all being given material that they can learn and work on and record to do some more smaller collaborative videos. So next week I start putting some of those together for them. Um, which is which is great, and it's, I think it's very enterprising um, that they've they've pulled that together, and I think it's this thing that um, the way institutions and I mean people like like Esther are reacting to what has happened in lockdown um, has a big effect on the members or the people involved because you can really create some real positivity um, with. I'm very impressed by the um, National Children's Orchestra. They've been doing a series of webinars. Um, and my son, who, who was supposed to go for the first time this, this summer, um, and when he realised he wasn't going, it was, he was very, sort of, oh, oh, I'm not involved then, and, and wouldn't at first engage with the webinars. Uh, but I managed to finally persuade him to come have a look. And it was brilliant. You know, was the, the fun stuff they'd done on the polls, and, and it was quite fast moving. And so for that certain age group, which I think is a really difficult age, you know, that sort of, 10, 11, 12, you know, maybe not so tech savvy as, as the ones, well, maybe more tech savvy in some ways, but finding it harder to um, relate to people online than maybe 16, 17 year olds, you know, who, yeah. who are used to learning online. Um, but I think they've really hit, hit the sweet spot there. And, and actually he's incredibly engaged with it now and has decided he wants to be a composer. So brilliant, brilliant. So, actually, I'm, I'm doing a, a, a helping out with a composition workshop in a couple of weeks time that runs annually in Cambridge that I've done physically for a few years. Um, and that will just be a webinar again or, or a Zoom meeting, talking to the students who want to apply about how to write, in this case, it's for violin and piano. So we've got a pianist and, and, and composer and, and a violinist. You know, and I think that will be quite successful online because really those sorts of things, it's about imparting lots of interesting bits of information, which you can do um, using Hazel's you know, finger techniques of, of do it this way and this is what you do and this is this is how you write pizzicato and this is what you can't do you know so i think i think those sort of things are proving to be fairly worthwhile and i, I i'm left you know what is it 10 as you say 10 11 weeks in with this feeling that what we've got to do after this is find the things that will actually help us post lockdown and the things that actually have proved to be useful you know what what is it that we take away from this it's never going to be quite the same again i think yeah, yeah. What about for you, Phil? On the out on the International Space Station, how's how's it been for you this week? <laughs> he's 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 on his own there. Yeah, I'm. You've got a Teddy with you this week on the International. Oh no, well, um, it wasn't allowed in space. Well, fair enough. There wasn't enough room on the rocket, but um, but here I am now, feeling feeling lighter than I normally do. Um, <laughs> <laughs> no, it's, it's 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 been quite an interesting week. It's 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 interesting what you say, Nicole. My 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 daughter's eleven, uh, and uh, is you know the only child in the house, uh, and that's it's it's with the homeschooling and all the rest of it. It's it's been quite difficult sometimes, um, with the social side of things. You know, um, it's sort of all the Facebook chats um, uh, and. Uh, zoom chats with her friends are great but but not being there in the flesh so it it, it has been quite a, a journey for her um she's she's setting her sights completely on the on school starting in september uh, that that's all she's focused on so fingers crossed that actually happens because <laughs> that's that's what's keeping her going and i think it's the same for for a lot of kids they they, they miss school and and the eleven year olds are missing leaving their primary school before going on to the new school as well. So there's there's that. But uh, it's it's been an interesting week as it always is. Um, had to do lots of recording for some guy who wanted some film music done. Lots of it online and um, and WAV files. I don't, think, I don't think who that was. <laughs> so, so we got that. Looking forward tremendously to next week. Um, 
with with the with the with the sessions. I'm looking forward to the first uh, the, the opening Tuesday night where we all get together because I'm not sure you mentioned Nicole. I think the presenters are uh, are coming along as well. So oh, I'll are see. they? Oh, brilliant! I should know that. Yeah, yeah. So 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 you'll be able to sort of say hi to the people uh, that will be taking the sessions uh, the following few days. Oh yes, I didn't mention Jo Horder and her Feldenkrais. So, you know, if you feel, if you're suffering from stiff sitting in a chair, teaching online, lockdown, lockdown, then you can teach your body as a temple with Jo every morning on the sessions. So that's a really good one. I'm going to totally join in. Yeah. I mean, do that. <laughs> so the, basically the opening tech setup session it's is, a party. It's more than that, really. It's a sort of fun, yeah. Oh yeah, it's very relaxed. I mean, we we all know it's a problem. We all know it's it's you know what plugs into what and what buttons do I press. It's always a problem. But at least we can sit down with friends and have a glass of wine and work it out, and it, and then it'll all be fine. And we'll be ready for the next three days. And and to finish with one of Sheila's completely mad quizzes. And, and uh, Nicole and I have had a little glimpse at, yeah, at what yeah. is in store. And uh, I'm looking forward to seeing and hearing your reactions to it. <laughs> Brilliant. Brilliant. Che cheating already, have you? Yeah. <laughs> Jesus is guinea pigs. <laughs> if I land back safely, I'll be back Friday night for the quiz. Oh, there you go. That'll be good to see. So actually, we won't be live on YouTube on Friday night next Friday, will we? Will we feel because we'll be in Chris Haig's folk session. We'll be in the folk session and Sheila's quiz. But yeah. the following Friday, we'll be back. We'll be back. We'll be back. Yes. <laughs> uh, so we really look forward to seeing you in two weeks if we're not seeing you on the CPD sessions. Um, for everybody who is joining us next week, see you Tuesday night. Um, but thank you so much to Hazel from Esther Portugal, Phil from the International Space Station, and um, Steve, who's now going to go and get some fish and chips. But to play us out, we're going to have rather a lovely thing. Don't worry, Hazel, I haven't forgotten. It's beautiful, this. Hazel, tell us, we, we got, she got a nice little video to share with us. Tell us about it, Hazel. Okay, so part of our uh, Porto conference um, is uh, injecting a little bit of our, our particular culture into the conference. And so there was an idea that, that everybody who came to the conference could play together and play a little bit of Fado, which is our national um, music. It's kind of the equivalent to flamenco. Um, and it's an UNESCO cultural thinkly bobby. Um, so as, it, as, as it's all up in the air, um, we decided to do one of um, Steve's specialities and and ask all of the the people who who were thinking of going who were going to go who who might not even have wanted to go but play an instrument to join us in playing a little fado so we've been receiving videos um i'm happy to say we already have four videos from sd uk members um which is great um but we want more so uh we've put a temporary um montage together um, which uh, Nicole is going to play now. Um, and you can see that the screen is half full. And you can also see that there's only one cello. Um, and you can hear that when there are pizzicato sections, they're not together. So we need lots of people to send us videos so that then we have a nice mixed bag that um, we fill up the screen at least. Um, and that there's so many people playing pizzicato that it actually sounds together. That's <laughs> thousands. <laughs> the answer, the more so, people you've got, the better it sounds. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> well, that's my theory, anyway. Um, and um, all the information can be found on our website, um, the Esther 2020 Conference website. Um, under you have to look for program. Click on program, and it says Fado Four Strings. And there are all the parts there. There's the score and there's also the video which you accompany. Um, and that's Artur Caldeira. And he's uh, he was playing the, the guitar and there's the, the voice. And then after it's all finished, he's going to add the Portuguese guitar, which is the really special sound. Um, he'll, and he'll accompany appropriately to the to the sound that's that's the finished product. So that that will be a little surprise ending to the to the editing. 
Um, so this is what we have so far. Thank Great. you, Nicole. And, and so we need uh, more cellos and basses in particular, don't we? And of course, everything else as well, but of course, everything else. But yes, as many as possible. It would be great if we had to make all the little squares about this big. If there were that many people on the screen, it would be fantastic. <laughs> Amazing. Right. Here we go. So we'll say goodbye now and then we'll play this and then we'll just disappear into the into the uh, atmosphere along with Phil. Uh, Love to see you all. See you in two weeks. Here we go. Yeah. This is it. <laughs> Thank you, everybody. See you in two weeks.